Whatever your feelings about centipedes may be, one cannot deny that they are extraordinarily impressive hunters. It's small wonder, therefore, that these animals have been able to survive with minimal change for over 400 million years. And just as they prowled among the first pioneering plants to liven up the barren, inhospitable lands of the ancient earth, so too do they thrive amidst the hustle and bustle of our modern world. But for all their success, these denizens of the prehistoric past are, for the most part, hardly something that warrants the warmest of welcomes from us Homo sapiens. For many years, I myself was far from the biggest fan of centipedes. It was a fear that was instilled in me at a very young age, upon being misled into believing that they were deadly. In fact, not only do I recall the moment, the dialogue even, that awakened my fear, I explicitly remember not being afraid of centipedes before that. In the months prior, I had at least a couple encounters with these animals, none of which stirred any sort of panic whatsoever. At most, the unique body plans and movements of centipedes caused them to draw my attention a little more than the insects and spiders I'd regularly see around my area. Thanks to this new fear, however, my next meeting with one of these multi-legged predators was, in the eyes of my five-year-old self, nothing short of traumatic. Screams are plenty rent the air, and no small amount of tears were shed either. It accumulated, unfortunately, in the death of the centipede that, though in hindsight was nothing more than an animal wandering around, utterly oblivious to the pandemonium it had caused was something that seemed to me in my panic-stricken state to be nothing short of an otherworldly monstrosity on a mission to murder. It was a long journey for me to overcome the intense revulsion towards centipedes and other creepy crawlies that had plagued my early childhood. But curiosity proved to be a powerful force. Almost against my will, it incentivized me to learn more about these animals. A sort of morbid attraction, and all the while my fear ebbed away, leaving room in its eventual absence for that mild curiosity to blossom into interest and then obsession. I do wonder, however, if discarding my childhood fear of centipedes may have been a quicker, easier job if I had the chance to meet the subject of today's video. A centipede so mellow, harmless, and utterly unthreatening that even myself of old would have had trouble being afraid of it. When it comes to centipedes, all we tend to think about are the giants, like this Ethmostigmus rubripes, a creature for which even Australia's most feared spiders, the funnel webs, are little more than plump eight legged snacks. But centipedes are an extremely diverse group, and even within the single genus Ethmostigmus, there is some incredible variety. This is Ethmostigmus muri, a close relative of Ethmostigmus rubripes, yet the antithesis in almost every way. Ethmostigmus is a fairly wide-ranging genus, with a distribution spanning much of Australasia, Asia, and Africa. Many are large, robust centipedes, some exceeding all but the very biggest Scolopendra species in size. There is substantial geographic overlap between Scolopendra and Ethmostigmus, and this, combined with their very similar appearance, means that the two genera can be easily mistaken for one another. However, Ethmostigmus species can be readily distinguished from other centipedes on the basis of their spiracles, which are the small openings along the animal's body through which they breathe. In Ethmostigmus, the foremost pair of spiracles are significantly larger than the rest and have a visibly spongy texture. Australia is home to six described Ethmostigmus species, as of a taxonomic revision published in 1983, of which all except Ethmostigmus rubrapes are endemic to the country. Ethmostigmus muri is one of the smaller members of the genus, 
reaching a little over 10 centimetres in length. There have been only a limited number of recordings of this species in the wild, which makes its range difficult to properly gauge. Based on what we do know, however, it seems that Ethmostigmus muri occurs from central Queensland through the Northern Territory to the far northeast of Western Australia. But if the available information on Ethmostigmus muri's distribution isn't scant enough, Public knowledge on the species' behaviour and ecology borders on non-existent. The 1983 revision in which Ethmostigmus muri along with four other species were first described provides excellent insight in regards to their anatomy and defining features, though coverage of other aspects of the species' biology was lacking to say the least. This is where I have to draw off my own knowledge as well as the experience of a couple others who have worked with this bizarre centipede. And I'm very glad this isn't a uni assignment with a proper criteria for references, because I chatted with a couple other centipede nutters on Messenger probably wouldn't look very compelling on a bibliography. Even with next to no knowledge of the species' habits in the wild, it's easy to infer, based off its unique anatomy, that its lifestyle must be very different from that of the more archetypal giant centipedes like Ethmostigmus rubripes. With its soft, contractile, sausage-like body, tapering towards a tiny head and legs that are almost comically small, it's clear that Ethmostigmus muri is not at all suited for a life of cruising through the undergrowth at high speeds and overpowering large, potentially dangerous prey. It seems that, while its larger cousins are busy terrorising the smaller inhabitants of the bush, Ethmostigmus muri has found its inner peace and taken a more passive approach to life. Of all the centipede species I have thus far encountered, None are as inoffensive and, dare I say, harmless as Ethmostigmus muri. Some of you may know that I developed an allergy to centipede bites after receiving one too many envenomations. So centipedes have, by and large, been something that I keep my hands well away from as of late. Yet in spite of this, Ethmostigmus muri is a species that I still feel completely comfortable with free handling. If anything, it's more like a somewhat faster version of a millipede than an actual centipede. But what could an animal like Ethmostigmus muri be preying on? It's obviously not going to be grappling with scorpions, snakes, and diving headfirst into funnel-web spider burrows it must be opting for smaller, softer targets. In captivity, the species seems to be more than happy to scavenge on typical feeders like cockroaches and crickets, though it will ignore these same prey items if alive, even if they are considerably smaller than the centipede. So, is Ethmostigmus muri an obligate scavenger? Well, probably not, as there are a few tantalising hints that it may be a specialist hunter of one particular prey item that can be found in abundance pretty much all over Australia. Anecdotally, Ethmostigmus muri has been alleged to be found in association with termite mounds, possibly with some degree of regularity. And termites certainly seem like a fitting prey item for a centipede that has all but forsaken its weaponry. In addition, the species' bizarre anatomy is something that could plausibly be highly conducive to a life of hunting these minuscule, soft-bodied insects. Its tiny head and contractile body would be very well suited for probing the narrow tunnels constructed by termites and its short legs would allow it to locomote through confined spaces with little hindrance. However, with no proper research or observations at least that I'm aware of, Ethmostigmus muri being a termite terminator remains little more than informed speculation. But hey, that opens up a potential topic for another video somewhere down the line. What can be said with confidence is that, for anything much larger than a termite, 
Ethmostigmus muri is about as harmless and benign as scolopendrid centipedes get. The extreme disparity in size, behaviour, morphology and apparent diet between Ethmostigmus muri and Ethmostigmus rubripes, in spite of their close relatedness, is a potential example of a result of niche partitioning. Also known as niche differentiation, this is an ecological phenomenon in which natural selection drives competing species to exploit their environment's resources in different ways, reducing competition. Ethmostigmus rubripes is present throughout most, if not all, of Ethmostigmus muri's range, and the species favour similar habitats as well. However, while Ethmostigmus rubripes is a powerful, aggressive, generalist predator suited to tackling large prey, Ethmostigmus muri is better equipped for small, soft-bodied targets that would be of little to no interest to the former. As such, even though these are closely related centipedes inhabiting the same areas, there would likely be minimal competition between the two. I hope you all enjoyed this opportunity to learn about this oddball amongst the centipedes. And by learn, I really mean listened to me talk about how little information I could find for half the video. If coming face to face with this short-legged sausage didn't ease your fear of centipedes at least a bit, then feel free to check out this video, which showcases how even the huge, fearsome Ethmostigmus rubripes can have a surprising amount of patience. And don't forget to subscribe if you enjoyed my content. Thank you very much for watching, I shall see you all again very shortly.